God bless, God bless, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless. We are going to read John 15. This is the promise of the Spirit. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive it, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself, thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard now, you ha ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise. Let us go hence. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth. He purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the world through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. And as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, 
as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now they had, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that it is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken unto you, that ye shall not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, ye the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. All these things they will do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whitherest goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, 
that he shall take of mine and shew it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. What is this that he says unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. Because I go to the Father? What is this? A little while. Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, That ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, but her hour, because her hour is come. But as soon as she delivered, she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now, ye know, ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall speak you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee by this we believe that thou camest from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, ye is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. The prayer to be glorified. These words Jesus these words spake Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before, before the world was. The Prayer for the Disciples I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. 
now they have known all they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee for i have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have made known surely that i came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine and all mine are thine and thine are mine and i am glorified in them and now i am no more in the world but these are the these are in the world and i come to thee holy father keep through thine own name those who thou hast given me that they may be one as we are amen while i was with them in the world i kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me i have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled and now come i to thee and these things i speak in the world that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves i have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldst keep keep them from the evil one they are not of the world even as i am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and thou hast sent me into the world even so i have sent them into the world and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth neither pray i for these alone but for them also which believe on me through their word that they may all be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that they also may be one in us that the word may believe that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me i have given them that they may be one even as we are one i in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me father i will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where i am that they may that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundations of the world o righteous father the world hath not known thee but i have known thee and these things have known that thou hast sent me and i have declared unto them thy name and i will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and i in them jesus betrayal and arrest when jesus had spoken these words he went forth with his disciples and over the book of Cedron, where was a garden in which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times restored thither with the disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisee, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them whom seek ye they answered him jesus of nazareth jesus said unto them i am he and judas also which betrayed him stood with them as soon then as he had said unto them i am he they went backward and fell to the ground then asked he again whom seek ye and they said jesus of nazareth jesus answered i have told you that i am he if therefore ye seek me let these go their way 
that they saying that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me have I lost none then Simon Peter having a sword drew it and smote the high priest's servants and cut off his right ear the servants name was Malchus then said Jesus unto Peter put up thy sword into the sheath the cup which my father give, hath given me shall I not drink it Jesus before Jewish authorities then the band and the captain of officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first for he was father-in-law to Cyphus which was a high priest the same year now Cyphus was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people and Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple that the disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the place of the high priest but Peter stood at the door without then went out of that other disciple which was known unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought Peter brought in Peter then says the damsel that kept the door unto Peter are not thou also one of this man's disciples he say I am not and the servants and officers stood there who made a fire of coals for it was cold and they warmed themselves and Peter stood with them and warmed himself the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine Jesus answered him I spake openly to the world I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whither the Jews always resort and in secret have I said nothing why askest thou why askest thou me ask them which heard me what I have said unto them behold they know what I said and when he had thus spoken one of the officers which stood by stroked Jesus with the palm of his hand saying answerest thou the high priest so Jesus answered him if I have spoken evil if I have spoken evil bear witness of the evil but if well why smitest thou me now Annas had sent him bound unto Cyphus the high priest and Simon Peter stood stood and warmed himself they said therefore unto him art not thou also one of his disciples he denied it and said I am not one of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off said did not I see thee in the garden with him Peter then denied again and immediately immediately the cock crew Jesus before Pontius Pilate then led they Jesus from Cyphus unto the hall of judgment and it was early and they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover Pilate then went out unto them and said what accusation bring you against this man they answered and said unto him if he were not a male factor we would not have delivered him up unto thee then said Pilate unto them take ye him and judge him according to your law the Jews therefore said unto him it is not lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake signifying what death he should die then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him art thou the king of the Jews Jesus answered him sayest thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it thee of me Pilate answered am I a Jew thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me what hast thou done Jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews but now is my kingdom not from hence 
Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom, that ye that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Jesus crowned with thorns. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault with him, or in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The, Jesus an the Jews answered him, The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard, th heard that saying, he was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then says Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou that I knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were granted, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee had the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whoever make himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold, your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Jesus crucified. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which in Hebrew which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha where they crucified him and two others with him on either side Jesus in the midst and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth the King of the Jews this title then read this title then read many of the Jews 
for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Trying to put words in his mouth. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now there was, now the coat was without a seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore amongst themselves, let us not rent it, but cast lots for it whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which say, they parted my raiment among them, for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. What did I say about the vesture? The bloodshed of Christ and atonement for sin. I read that earlier today. Wow. For bloodshed, being dipped in your enemy's blood in conflict. Okay. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister. Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold, thy son. Then says he to the disciple, Behold, thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. The death of Jesus. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was a set now there was set a vessel of full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it on a high sop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he sat, and he saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith truth, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture said, They shall look on him whom they pierced. Jesus laid in the sepulchre. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that they might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came of Jesus by night, and brought mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred hundred pound weight 
Then took they the body of Jesus, and wounded in linen clothes with the spices, as the manager, as the manner of the Jews, is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus. Therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. The Resurrection of Jesus The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon and Peter, and to, other, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they both ran together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he was stooping down and looking in, and saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went, went he in, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and saw and believed. For as they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Jesus appears to the disciples. Jesus appears to the disciples. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She says unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she laid, when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me, where thou have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascended unto my father and your father and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that the Lord had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus, and stood in the midst, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he shewed unto them his hand and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whose 
whosoever sins, ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins, ye retain, they are retained. Thomas doubt and belief. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see him in his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then says he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe in Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Alright, that's what I'm going to leave it at. It's a long reading. Remember, blessed are ye. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And if I could tell you anything, if that's what it costs to see him, it's not something I ever wish on anyone. I suffered to meet the Lord. I suffered to meet God. I suffered, still suffering. Blessed are ye, for ye believed and have not seen you're more powerful than you know so i love you brother and sister in christ bless sunday in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit all right god bless